just say a few words, uh, like a short introduction about the exhibition. Um, actually, I will comment a little bit on the title of the exhibition, uh, and especially on silence, uh, a word that I think is uh, very powerful. And last year, when uh, the artist first proposed uh, this title, when we discussed it for the first time, I immediately had to, to ask myself, OK, so which silence is specifically implied? Whose silence? And what is really at the other side of silence, let's say? Um, in the digital age that we are addressing, uh, silence presents a kind of a certain complexity. And uh, it's, we would say, multifaceted with different interconnected aspects. So we might think, in general, of silence as what is at the other side, let's say, of uh, our nose, noisy echo chambers behind the filter bubbles that uh, we have in the networks. It's perhaps what we hardly get to feel or to sense in uh, the networks, in the environments that we are joining, where there is a con kind of a continuous flow of information, of communication. It is, silence could be considered what does not exist, what does not appear, what does not become a part of a discussion. And the actors of silence in the digital era, I would say could be human, but also non-human. So could be users, but could also be machines. What I mean by that, to be a bit more precise, is that silence can refer to the voices that we don't get to hear. So to citizens and users that for different reasons do not find a way into our communication channels and respectively to news and images that are filtered out, do not reach us. But it can also, silence can also refer to hidden mechanisms of the networks, to infrastructures, and um, to uh, a kind of subtle and ongoing surveillance uh, to the kind of the black boxing of technology, what we don't get to know about. And the third point that I would like to address when thinking of silence has to do with our role in a way. So our complicity, um, how, let's say, tackling how we react within the networks, the networks that we are using, and perhaps ourselves being silenced uh, when we realize the asymmetries that are found in the networks, and perhaps we do nothing about or we feel that we can do not do anything about. So the work of um, Christophe and Matthias, in my opinion, interestingly, interestingly addresses all these different aspects. Uh, Christophe and Matthias have developed projects that aim in a way to break the silence of people that are, we could say, deprived of, the, of connectivity, like it happens, for instance, in the case of minorities. But they have also created works that expose the mechanisms and the constraints of the networks. And they have developed works that invite us to doubt our trust um, and the dependency that we have on devices, on platforms and infrastructures today. Now, while, uh, while addressing, uh, let's say, silence, the, pro the approach is in a way twofold. On one hand, they discuss cases of surveillance, of censorship, and on the other hand, they open ways for interaction and they create new autonomous zones of communication. And here it might be uh, useful to, to just bring for a second in Foucault um, that somehow this title is also inspired uh, from Foucault, because this comes from a sentence of Michel Foucault from Madness and Civilization, saying, I have not tried to write the, the history of the language, but rather the architecture um, of that um, silence. And uh, continuing uh, uh, on his, uh, let's say, line of thought, Foucault at some point clarifies that silence might be a shelter for power, but can also be a shelter from power. So in a way, this can make us think that acting within silence might be a way to develop, let's say, forms of resistance. Uh, the works of uh, Christophe and uh, Matthias um, are installations, platforms, tools that uh, are greatly dependent on the participation of the users. They are works to be experienced by us, but they are works also to be used. And uh, they are developed as a response to the needs of different groups of users, opposing forms of uh, silence and exclusion. So in a way, they embrace what I would like to see as infrastructural literacy 
and the development of what we could call as kind of counter infrastructures. Uh, the installation that we have in between us is such a network, a system of communication that works off the system and that could be set up anywhere with cheap materials, affordable infrastructures and existing devices. So these are networks that in a way reclaim a right to infrastructure and a right to connect, to communicate and to not be under surveillance. So in a way Christoph and Matthias bring back this notion that uh, pioneers in the late 90s were using, um, that they were calling it the freedom to connect, making people aware of the possibilities that they have already in their hands. So uh, these uh, they are networks that, let's say, depend on architectures and on relationships that users themselves can define. So to just conclude, I think that Silence, in this case, becomes what one might try to overcome, but at the same time, it's also the space that one acts within, escaping or surpassing, let's say, the constraints of connectivity nowadays. Uh, that's all from my side. I will leave it to Christophe and Matthias. Thanks.